Hey, what's going on uh, today? Uh, we're going to do a video on uh, Vanos rebuild on an E46 BMW. This car is a 2003 325XI. It's got about uh, 205,000 miles or about 330,000 kilometers on it. So there's a shot of what the internals look like with that kind of mileage. Uh, before you get into the Vanos rebuild, you'll need to remove your... Um, valve cover and uh, cabin filter housing. I've got separate videos on that. You can link uh, or have a look at before you get underway with the Vanos rebuild. You'll also need to remove your uh, fan shroud and clutch fan. And I have a video, video on that as well. Okay, first thing we need to do before we get into the Vanos rebuild is uh, disconnect these three electrical, electrical connectors. Uh, this one here on the cam shaft position sensor, you just squeeze both sides and pull it off. Down here in the exhaust uh, solenoid here, that's one to push that metal clip and pull that off. And then here the solenoid on the, uh, sorry, the solenoid here is the same as the other one. Push on the metal clip and pull straight off. I have those uh, connections off now, just a closer look for so you can see how it works. Uh, so on the solenoid's exhaust and intake, it's just uh, press this metal clip and it'll pull off quite easily. As for the uh, camshaft position sensor, um, there's two squeeze tabs here. You can see one there and one here. Now I've broken the end of this one off. So when you squeeze those, it's gonna, those little uh, clip wings on the side will uh, come out towards the, uh, the side of the connector and you know, it should allow you to slide it off. So since I, I broke this, it's still gonna work for a reconnection. Uh, but it'll be more difficult to get off next time. So just be careful. Uh, uh, again, old plastic connectors uh, are very uh, brittle. I'm going to disconnect this uh, connector here onto the, uh, the water pump or the thermostat housing. So again, let's push and connect. I've been in here before replacing the, um, the radiator ho hoses and I replaced the wire loom on some of these wire harnesses because they were old and brittle. So I've got this one zip tied in place. So I'm just going to clip that for now. We'll uh, do that up later and then uh, can move this harness out of the way. Next thing we want to do is disconnect this oil line that leads to the uh, thermostat, or sorry, the uh, oil filter housing. So you need a 19 millimeter wrench to loosen it. I recommend you get a shop towel in underneath the line because you may have a bit of oil spill out here. And note that there's a crush washer or a copper washer on each side of this oil line, so be careful you don't lose those. Okay, there's the bolt. And it looks like I still have a washer maybe attached. Yes, I do. There's that second washer. Okay, the next thing you want to do is uh, remove the two fasteners that are holding this uh, engine lift hook on. So there's a 11 millimeter uh, nut here and a 12 millimeter, uh, sorry, 13 millimeter bolt here on the top of the thermostat housing. I have those two fasteners uh, off and then I just uh, took the 13 millimeter bolt and threaded it in a few threads and put the hook back in there just uh, so I don't forget 
uh, when I reassemble. The next thing we're gonna do is remove these two caps on the uh, end of the Vanos unit. These are eight millimeter uh, hex, normal, normal direction on the thread. Uh, recommend you get some shop towels uh, ready that's, and a little small catch pan. You're likely going to have some oil that's going to drip out of here, uh, certainly out of the lower side here. So uh, just have a small catch pan and shop bags ready so you don't get oil all over your, uh, your hoses. Okay, they weren't too difficult. the top one first and have a shop rag ready yep, definitely got some oil coming out of there best we can. Okay, now the cap off the exhaust side. I expect we're going to have more oil on uh, this one. Just get the shop towel ready along with the catch, uh, small catch pan. Coming out. Try and sop that up the best we can. Now we need to remove two plastic caps that are inside uh, underneath uh, the caps that we just removed. I have the new one here just so you can see what it looks like. So uh, a little rubber O-ring on it with a, uh, a center piece that you can just grab on with a pair of needle nose pliers. So I'll pull those out now. spills out when we uh, try to remove these. So it seems fairly loose. Okay, got a little more oil that came out here. Clean that up. And now the one on the uh, exhaust side. Got a little bit more oil on that one, not too bad. Keep it as clean as we can. Okay, now there's two fasteners here, a fastener behind the plastic caps that we just removed. They're T30 Torx. Uh, so you want to make sure you have your uh, Torx bit seated squarely in the uh, fastener so you don't uh, damage the head of it. And these are reverse threads. So you're going to need to go clockwise to uh, loosen it. There's one on each uh, each end. Here's a look at the fastener, and uh, the one on the uh, exhaust side. The intake was like came, out, came loose fairly easily. Okay, that one's loose. And the other fastener. Okay, now we need to remove the fasteners that are holding the Van Vanos unit on. <clears throat> so there's uh, one, two, three, four, 
five in beside the camshaft shaft position sensor, six here, they're all 10 millimeter. And then uh, up here at the top is a 13 millimeter. I've got all those loose. Before I completely remove them and try to remove the vanish unit, I'm going to get a uh, plastic shopping bag or a garbage bag or something and I can slip in under the vanish unit to try and catch any oil that's going to fall out when I remove it. I have myself a plastic bag ready, <clears throat> some extra shop rags, so I'll loosen those uh, bolts off. Point of interest, uh, I bought this car 17 years ago, brand new. It's got uh, but 330,000 kilometers on it, which is about 205,000 miles. Uh, the Vanos has never been done, so this is the first time uh, I've done the Vanos. I've done the valve uh, cover gasket uh, once that I can recall. Take those fasteners off now. Should be able to just pull that vanos off now. So as I mentioned, I'm going to slip some plastic over this to try and control any oil that leaks out. Okay, I have that bag slipped over the uh, vanos unit, and I have a catch pan ready on the floor and some extra shop rags. So we're just going to wiggle this vanos unit and pull it straight towards us. There we go. Plastic bags catching on uh, some fasteners. <clears throat> there we go. So not a whole lot of extra oil came out, but there's a shot of the Vanus unit. So uh, I'll uh, clean that up and then we'll get on with uh, the rebuild. Besides the Vanos rebuild, uh, one of the other things I'm going to do while I have this apart is just to, because it's easier to do while it's out of the car is to replace this camshaft uh, position sensor. So I already have a new one uh, here along with all the uh, Vanos uh, rebuild kit parts. Okay today's job uh, we're working on a 2003 325xi BMW. We're going to do a Vanos rebuild including the uh, rattle kit repair. Uh, just a shot of the parts that uh, were, are required to uh, affect this re rebuild. Uh, you essentially got the rings and, and seals for the, the Vanos pistons. These are two of the, uh, the rings that get uh, installed for the rattle uh, rattle repair. Um, washers for the uh, oil feed line, uh, grommets and gaskets uh, for the valve cover. And uh, this is an add-on, uh, not part of the kit, but uh, all these items here were part of the rebuild kit that I bought. And uh, this item here is the camshaft position sensor. Uh, not required to affect the repair, but it's one of those things I thought, well, I bet it's easier to do while I have the Vanos apart rather than uh, having to re repair it uh, down the road. So I'm going to replace that as well. Okay, I have all the oil drained out of the Vanos, and uh, now we're going to carry on with the uh, rebuild. I'm going to do the uh, intake side first, complete it, and then do the exhaust side, just so I don't mix up any of the parts. The parts are interchangeable, but it's a uh, it's always good practice to put the parts back in uh, where they came uh, came out of. So first we need to remove these uh, five 10 millimeter bolts to get uh, gain access to the uh, uh, piston on the intake side. Now that 
we have the five bolts out, we'll just uh, pull the cover off. And have access to the piston. I'm gonna have to push it from the back side to get it out. There it goes. So you can see how much uh, how much play is in there, quite a bit. So it's in, definitely in, uh, in need of a rebuild. The symptoms I was having uh, that indicated I was probably in need of a rebuild was uh, I was having some very rough uh, cold starts. It was intermittent, it wasn't happening all the time, but uh, it, almost like it was uh, not firing on all cylinders. And uh, anyway, uh, rough cold starts is one of the symptoms for, uh, yeah, that's a lot of play in there. Okay, I've cleaned up that piston uh, a bit, got the excess oil off. Before we replace these uh, sealing rings, uh, because we're gonna do the anti or the rattle repair, um, we're gonna wait on replacing the rings so we don't damage them uh, when we put this in the vise in order to remove uh, the cap off the top. Okay, I've got the uh, intake Vanos piston in the vise. You need a 24 millimeter socket and uh, an impact wrench so you can give it a quick crack and try to break it loose. Um, you also need, if you have a vise, uh, a set of soft jaws so you don't damage the piston. If you don't have a set of soft jaws for your vise, you can always pick it, take a piece, a couple of pieces of soft uh, wood to uh, stick those in the vise so it doesn't damage the piston. So I'll go ahead and crack that with the impact wrench. Fuck. Okay, I've got it over the bench, and so I'm going to pull the parts out and uh, try to keep them in the same order. Let me take them out. When they go back in, that one's not coming loose. So. There we go. There's the ring, and there should be another washer in there, I believe. It's difficulty getting that uh, bottom washer out, so I've just grabbed a magnet. So that should help. There we go. Okay, there's all the parts out. Uh, so I'll clean those up. And uh, when I slip them back in, I'm going to put a very light coat of this uh, assembly lube on the parts. So there's uh, so they don't go in too dry. And this is the replacement ring that we're going to be putting in. And also note there's a washer on the back side of the cap here that uh, didn't come off. So. Okay, I've cleaned up the parts. And as I mentioned, I put a very light coat. Uh, coat of this assembly lube, engine assembly lube, on each of the parts and uh, at the bottom of the inside of the piston here. So we'll go ahead and assemble it now. And that's it. So we'll take it back to the vise and tighten it back uh, back down. Okay, I've got the uh, piston back in the vise. Again, 24 millimeter socket. I've tightened the vise down uh, pretty tight. Uh, couldn't find a torque spec on this uh, cap, so we're just going to tighten it as pretty much as tight as we can get it. Now that we have the cap on, we can replace the uh, seals and rings on the piston. 
So there is a Teflon uh, ring on, uh, on the larger side of the piston and the smaller side of the piston. And then underneath uh, those, there are rubber O-rings. So we have uh, the Teflon ring and the re replacement rubber O-ring. And the same for uh, the smaller diameter on the piston. So I have a very small uh, knife. I'm just going to carefully cut the Teflon outer ring without marring the uh, piston and remove it very carefully. Okay, so I've got the Teflon ring off. Uh, do the same with the rubber ring. I found that the inner ring a little more difficult to get off, and the, uh, the straight razor seemed to work a little bit better. So I was able to cut through it. And we'll peel it off. If you uh, again, you want to be very careful not to mar up the side of the piston. Piston. If you do mar it at all. Uh, recommend using a very fine uh, emery cloth just to take a, take the edge off that you've created with your cutting tool. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing now with the smaller ring. Okay, the outer ring off. And now the inner ring. Get the inner ring off. Okay, I cleaned up uh, the grooves, and I may have been dreaming, but I just found what I felt like a very tiny nick from the razor, so I took this uh, very fine uh, emery cloth. I think it's a 2,000 or 3,000 grit uh, sort of cloth, and I cleaned up the edge just to be safe. Okay, so we've got the new rings here. Install the uh, rubber O-rings first. I've got my rubber ring that's popping out before I have the Teflon ring seated here. Just fight with that a bit. There we go. Alright, so we got that one complete. Before I put the uh, piston back in the Vanos assembly, I'm just going to put a very light coat of assembly lube on the outer edges of the piston. It 
do it. Okay, so I'm also gonna put a very light coat of uh, assembly lube on the inside of the Vinos assembly. And then we'll insert the piston with the new uh, rings. Much more snug <clears throat> compared to the uh, the old ones, so it should uh, do better. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, rebuild on the exhaust side. The four ten millimeter uh, bolts to loosen. When you're moving the exhaust side, there's actually a spring under here, so you'll have to hold it down until you get the uh, fasteners out. I'm just going to leave a couple threads on it until I get the both bolts ready to remove. Oh, the piston come out <clears throat> come out with the cap here as you can see and there's the spring so same process as the other side we need to clean all this stuff up um, remove the old uh, rings and reassemble I won't repeat the process on the video it's the same as uh, the intake side you know, the only difference would be the spring and just uh, make sure you can see it's a uh, uh, wider on the bottom than it is at the top. Make sure you can put the spring in. You put it in the way it came out. Okay, I've uh, replaced the rattle ring in the uh, inside of the piston. I've replaced the rubber O-rings and the outer uh, Teflon rings on uh, the piston. Put a light coat of assembly lube on the piston and the inside wall of the uh, Vanos assembly. Uh, so now it's time to reassemble. So just note that the spring is uh, wider at the bottom than it is the top and the bottom of the wind of the spring fits uh, on a little tab on the uh, bottom of the, uh, the housing for the Vanos assembly. <clears throat> if you stick the spring in and then just turn it, you'll, uh, you'll feel where it, where it hits that. Before I put that in there though, I'm just going to uh, check it. Okay, so the spring in. Piston in place. I've coated the inside of this uh, cap here with a bit of assembly lube as well. spring in place, push this down and uh, try to get a couple of the fasteners started.
through a few threads started on uh, each of those two bolts. Okay, that cap started. Before I put the cap on the uh, intake side, I'm just going to pop the piston back out. And let it seat itself inside the cap for just a few minutes before I install it. And I've put a light coat of assembly lube uh, in the cap as well. So I'm just going to let that sit for a few moments. Again, make sure your hands are clean so you don't get any grit in there. And uh, if you don't have assembly lube, you could always uh, use a very light coating of uh, oil. Okay, I've got those fasteners started, now we'll just tighten them down. Okay, I have all those fasteners uh, hand tight now, I'm just going to tighten those down. No torque spec, just as tight as I can uh, get them by hand. Recommend you uh, crisscross your pattern when you're tightening down your bolts. Okay, now we have those tightened down. We're just going to want to make sure pistons are moving up and down without an issue. Intake side seems good. Just have to push it from the back. This one's uh, spring loaded. A bit of oil just come out of there and shot me. It seems fine. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to replace the uh, camshaft position sensor while I have this uh, Vanos assembly off the car. So here, here's the sensor. Comes with a new rubber O-ring and a new fastener, which is a five uh, millimeter hex uh, bolt. I'm going to go ahead and install that now. Where it goes on the Vanos is uh, right here. And that position there. So I'm going to put a slight, uh, slight coat of oil on the other ring, slip it over the sensor, and then install it. Okay, I have that sensor in place now, and I'm just uh, finish tightening it down.
Okay, so uh, <clears throat> now what we want to do is just make sure the mating surfaces are cleaned up here on the back of the Venus assembly here and uh, on the car. So the mating surface uh, there. So I'm going to clean all that up and get ready for reinstall. In addition to cleaning up the uh, back of the Vanos uh, housing, uh, we're going to clean this mating surface up as well. There's a uh, metal gasket on here at the moment. I'm going to pull that off and clean up the mating surface. Uh, you normally use uh, rubbing alcohol to clean up the surfaces. Once they're all clean, we'll uh, go ahead and reinstall. Okay, this one's completely cleaned. I just used this uh, rubbing alcohol on a shop rag to clean it up. Now onto the car. This is the uh, metal gasket I was talking about. The ends of it slip over these uh, small dowels on each side here. So I'm going to just pull that off and then clean up that surface. I have a bit of a buildup on the uh, mating surface here of uh, the Vanna, so I'm going to scrape it off before I uh, clean it off with alcohol. If you do the same, I'd recommend you use a plastic scraper so you don't mire the surface. Okay, I've got the mating surface cleaned up. I also cleaned the mating surface for the valve cover gasket along here in the uh, seals for the, sorry, the spark plugs. <clears throat> um, it's a rubber gasket for the valve cover, so it doesn't need to be uh, completely clean as you would for, uh, for laying RTV sealant, but you want to make sure there's no large uh, chunks of debris that will uh, cause a leak between the gasket and the cover. So I have my new uh, gasket here. Gonna slip that into place. Make sure it slips over the uh, the dowel ends. There, now we're ready to install the uh, Vanos cover. The new gasket in place, we're ready to slip the uh, Vanos uh, cover back on. to slip over those uh, dowel pins that, on the outer edges. There, so now we can uh, put the fasteners back on. Which were six 10 mil and the one 13 mil stud bolt for the talker. Okay, now that we've got them all hand tight, we're gonna uh, torque them down. <clears throat> torque settings is six uh, foot pounds or 72 inch pounds. Now that those uh, are torqued down, don't forget we have this uh, engine lift hook that needs to go on that stud. The next thing we're going to do is put the uh, Torx fasteners back in uh, here. The kit, the rebuild kit from ECS Tuning uh, comes with new fasteners, uh, followed by the, uh, the new plugs. So we'll go ahead and put those in now. Just a reminder that they're reverse threads, so... Uh, Left hand turn counterclockwise to get them in. Make sure the piston on the uh, intake side is pushed all the way in before you start to uh, thread the fastener in. Just 
Just tighten the man tight for now. Okay, the torque on those is six foot pounds, so I'm going to go ahead and torque them. Okay. Now we'll slide those plastic caps in. And now we'll put these caps on. These are a normal right hand thread. It's always a good idea to check the threads before you put them on to make sure there's no grit or grime that got in there. If there is, clean that up. If I recall, they were eight millimeter hex. Okay, tighten those down now. All right, now we're gonna reconnect our uh, oil feed line. Okay, now we need to reconnect the uh, oil line that feeds the Banos. With my kit uh, came two uh, new washers for the uh, for the Vanos uh, or the oil line banjo bolt. Bolt. So slip one of those on. Second one on the other side, and we can reconnect the line. I actually had four of these washers that came with my kit. I'm not sure if that's normal or not, but that's enough that I could do both ends of the line if I wanted to. Not sure that I don't want to get down in there at this point. So. And that was a 19 millimeter wrench, if you recall, to tighten that up. All that good. Next, we want to reconnect our three, uh, sorry, yeah, three electrical connectors one to the thermostat here. Onto the cam shaft position sensor. If you recall, I broke my tab on that one. Still got a good connection, and the last one is on the uh, exhaust side, solenoid.
Okay, that's it. That's the Vanos rebuild. Uh, to finish off the job, I have separate videos for a, the uh, valve cover ca gasket jobs. You need to replace the valve cover and the gas, excuse me, the gaskets. And then reinstall the uh, cabin filter housing and cabin filter and the clutch fan and uh, radiator shroud. And the last uh, connection is a solenoid on the intake side. It's a separate harness, but uh, it's up, uh, up here. There, so that completes the, uh, the Vanos rebuild job. Uh, just to complete the job, I have separate videos on the valve cover uh, gasket replacement. So that's the next step, followed by uh, replacement of the um, cabin filter housing and cabin filter, and then uh, clutch fan and uh, radiator shroud. Thanks for watching.